Hello and welcome back to episode 3 of our PET to Benzene series. Now, today we have four things to do, so this might get a little confusing, but firstly, I have to very briefly try the um, sodium benzoate method of getting benzene, because I haven't done it. I have to do it to compare. Um, we're going to add that to our red benzene that we already have, and we've got to redistill it to get pure benzene. We also have to try recover our ethylene glycol as the third thing. Um, and we also have to try a new method of getting um, benzene from PET that is the one pot reaction as opposed to the two steps. Um, so those are the four things we're trying today. Uh, it might get a little confusing because I lost quite a lot of footage <laughs> for this episode, but hopefully I've filled in the blanks uh, enough. So I put 100 grams of sodium benzoate and 32 grams of sodium hydroxide in there, and this has worked a lot better than the sodium um, terephthalate. I've got it right. I think it's terephthalate. Anyway, 100 grams of sodium benzoate, uh, 32 grams of sodium hydroxide. It's working a lot better. Maybe it's because I'm using milder temperatures. I didn't just. I'm, I'm really going soft on heating because mainly because I've got more time today than I did the other day. But um, yeah, there's not been as much white smoke. I've done a better joint seal. Um, I had to use a new joint because I broke the other one, obviously, and it's been coming over at a really good rate. So I'll get a reasonable yield, I think, out of this, um, which is not something I could say about the sodium terephthalate. 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 All right, and here is our orange benzene from the sodium benzoate dry distillation. And you can see it's uh, there's quite a bit there. Um, I used 100 grams of sodium benzoate, and if we assume that this is 100% benzene, which is obviously not because there's some solids at the bottom, um, I got 44.8 grams of it, which corresponds to an 83% yield, assuming this is 100%. It's not, um, and 83% is far too high for a dry distillation like this. Um, but I think after distillation, it's going to be, you know, quite reasonable, like 50% odd, which is really good. Um, I was worried that because sometimes scaling up doesn't work very well, but it has looked like it's worked fine. I've got my our benzene from the dry distillation of sodium terephthalate um, and there's not much compared to the amount there so we're going to combine the two benzenes together and dry it over calcium chloride just to sap up any last remaining bits of water and then we'll chuck it in the distillation flask distill it and we should get nice clear water free benzene coming out and uh, just in case you were still unconvinced we we're making an aromatic product we can always light it on fire <laughs> And, uh, the light's terrible, I'm sorry, it's midnight, but it's obviously highly flammable and it is pumping out a black smoke, um, so this is typical of aromatic carbons. I really just wanted to light that on fire, so thanks for giving me an excuse. Alright, we've got our benzene in there with some boiling chips, the heating is just turned on, it'll come up, go down here into this flask, which is on some salt and ice. Um, which will freeze the benzene because it has a melting point of 5.5 degrees and that'll keep the fumes down if it's just in a orange or well, perfectly clear solid um, after distillation, so that's what we're hoping for. I've got a slightly different setup for my distillation, I haven't tested this yet but um, this is a thermometer adapter um, which goes in here and I thought when I was buying it that it would fit to here but well maybe not but it's really made for, for going in the side next to flasks which is very useful. I've also got a, a digital thermocouple, which I've had for a few months now, which I have filmed a few times, but every time it's been in a video, the video has failed, so maybe it's a bad luck omen. I've tested this, and this is, um, you know, give or take a degree, um, really, but um, it's pretty good. Um, so I can't shove it all the way down there, so it's sitting here at the appropriate place. Coming over very fast. 77, um, which I assume is just like temperature lag between the, the glass adapter and, um, you know, like it's close enough for me to know it's benzene, but if I was trying to record a temperature, um, this would be pretty bad because I wouldn't know if that's actually 78 or, you know, 85 or something like that. As per usual, it's very hard to see on camera, but it's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's dripping down here and it's solidified down the bottom there. Um, it's just all frozen in the ice water, which is great because I cannot smell anything, which uh, limits my 
chances of getting cancer and also this whole place blowing up due to an explosion. I mean, the fans are running, the doors open and stuff, but, you know, health and safety and shit. This is a very well-behaved distillation, which is nice to have one of these for a, for a change to remind you how distillation is meant to work. All right, we've got basically all of it out, but more importantly, all the red is in there and all the clear is in here. Um, it's all solidified, basically all solidified. Uh, temperature's dropping now. I've turned the heat off, can't really boil that dry. And you can start to see um, the stuff condensing here has got a slight yellow tinge to it, so I'm worried if I push it any further than that, which is really only another couple of mils, um, I might start getting some yellow in here, which is not what I want. So we're choosing uh, purity over absolute 100% yield. Um, and um, we'll, we'll call it a day, and I'll see if I can find a container to store this in. Yep. Perfect, there's our solid block of benzene. Excellent, excellent. All right, so we need pure ethylene glycol from this ethylene glycol mess. Um, now, it may be easy to just say, oh, we'll distill it right now, but that would be forgetting that it's full of sodium hydroxide, and at 200 degrees, concentrated sodium hydroxide um, will probably etch my flask, will possibly destroy it. So I need to neutralize this sodium hydroxide. So we're gonna obviously choose the cheapest acid we have, which in my case is hydrochloric. Well, actually, that's not strictly true. The cheapest acid I have is citric acid. Um, but if we start neutralizing um, the stuff with citric acid and citrate ions floating around, we'll probably form some um, citrate ethylene glycol esters at 200 degrees, which would be a big polymer mess. So anyway, we're going to use hydrochloric um, acid. Now, you may straight away go, oh, no, but that's a volatile acid. You can't use that. Well, we're going to neutralize it all. Um, we're not going to have any free acid left, so... Everything in there will just be sodium chloride. Um, and that won't etch my flask at 200 degrees. So I've cooled this down so we can slowly add um, hydrochloric until it's uh, pH neutral. So I lost all the footage for the ethylene glycol distillation. So uh, in summary, it was awful. Because ethylene glycol has such a high boiling point, it tends to bump really violently. So it was all right when I was just getting the water and stuff off. But by the time it got up to the ethylene glycol's boiling point of 199 or something like that, it was really, really violently bumping. And this was forcing droplets of the um, crude mix over. So it kept turning this, my um, the ethylene glycol was collecting yellow. And so I kept having to change the, uh, the beaker over, but it... And, you know, trying to settle down the um, distillation. And I filled the bottom with a full of sand to try and help it boil all nicely. But it just wasn't enough. And then this started to turn yellow. And at which point I said, fuck it. I don't actually need ethylene glycol for anything. So I've got a small amount of recovered dried ethylene glycol. The worst bit about this, though, is because this was bumping so violently and splashing bits over. Um, this is contaminated with this a little bit. So it does smell as well. They both smell like sort of running fish. This is only very faint, but you can smell it as well. So that's a bit annoying because I was hoping to really recover some pure ethylene glycol from, you know, this. And I just can't see the point of putting all this effort in to try and get it. So I just gave up. So we have here our final yield of benzene. It is 33.8 grams, which corresponds to a 62% yield based entirely on the benzoate method. There was a couple of mils from the uh, trephylate method so that really puts the yield at about 55% odd from the uh, benzoate method, but it's pretty good. I'm actually really impressed with it, which is a bit disappointing because uh, that's the method we're competing with here at the, uh, the camp for decarboxylation of PET. So really in conclusion, the PET hydrolysis and then decarboxylation really wasn't that a good a method. I mean, it was very inefficient. It took me a very long time. I couldn't recover the ethylene glycol, um, and it didn't give me much benzene at the end of it. So it really had no advantages. Um, now, the only way I think that it could work as a viable method is, well, this is actually the original idea that was suggested to me, um, and that is to do the hydrolysis and the decarboxylation all in one pot. Um, because the hydrolysis should take place in molten sodium hydroxide, as well as decarboxylation, so if we just use enough sodium hydroxide in the melt with a PET, um, it should do both of those reactions and we just distill off benzene. The problem lies in the fact that terephilic acid has quite a high vapor pressure. In fact, that it likes to sublime off. I think it's, that's vapor pressure, right? Anyway, it sublimes off um, and so I think we might see a lot of white sort of um, terephilic acid um, 
coming over and, and uh, getting in the distillation apparatus. What I'm hoping is that we use enough sodium hydroxide um, that we won't form any free terephthalic acid so it won't sublime off because sodium terephthalate doesn't have a high vapor pressure so that won't have the same issue but um, I'm worried that in the mix we might um, pump off enough terephthalic acid. So um, how much sodium hydroxide do we need? Well we need two moles um, to do the hydrolysis. We need another two moles to do the decarboxylation. So I'm going to put in six moles of sodium hydroxide in with a PET. I've cut up two PET bottles into centimeter squares um, and so six moles of sodium hydroxide to that amount of PET is roughly 54 grams. I think it's roughly the same amount of sodium hydroxide, I can't quite remember at the moment. Um, but yeah, and then we'll chuck it in the same apparatus we had before and we'll heat it and uh, see if it works. All right, so uh, we just started this and very quickly we can see it's actually working. See this yellow liquid that's coming off? I'm pretty sure that's the yellow benzene that comes off from this reaction. Uh, bad news is it smells dreadful. Um, there's heaps of this white smoke pouring off as I sort of expected. This seems sort of like a, you know, the kind of scent that would produce lots of mysterious white smoke. Unfortunately, this joint has sprung a leak. I'm trying desperately to plug it, um, but I don't have any Teflon tape still. I forgot to buy some after last time, so... I'm a little bit stranded again. I should really abort this and fix it, but um, yeah, hopefully I don't uh, choose a huge benzene fire from this leaky joint, but uh, no promises. Yeah, it should be alright. There's more smoke coming out of that side than there is that side. <laughs> alright, the worst case scenario happened. Um, this clogged somewhere along the line, um, and that made the pressure build up and popped off this top here and um, it was quite dramatic it didn't it didn't fly off but it popped it fell off and <laughs> um, and then this white smoke just started pouring out of there i think it clogged here i tried scrubbing it which worked remarkably well for about 20 seconds until the apparatus clogged it's really good that i had a way of the pressure being released here uh, you know the apparatus isn't going to blow up because it's all just ground glass joints but um if the if the joints pop somewhere really inconvenient like here or here um, it could break the glass because um, it all just falls over or could start a fire whereas it, it, when it popped here that's sort of convenient now that's a pretty convincing clog there but that, that is blocked that bit off I don't know what this yellow crap is but it is definitely in the way alright I've gotten rid of the clog and what I've done is I've left this little bit open uh, <laughs> my hope is maybe the solid will start to die down and we'll start getting more benzene than orange crap over but uh, maybe that's a little optimistic. So I've started up again and I want to see what else crap comes over now. I feel like every time I turn the camera on I have good news and bad news to report. Good news is I believe it's actually working. It's not pumping off any white smoke. Um, it's just being like this. It barely looks like it's running. Um, and every so often I get a drop of orange liquid that drops down. Now the bad news is that every so often is about every five minutes or so um, it's calmed down way too much and I don't know why that is um, because I, I heated it and then stopped and then reheating it uh, what possibly I think might have happened is that maybe all the plastic melted into a bowl um, and it's not really getting very good um, contact with the sodium hydroxide maybe all the sodium hydroxide just sunk to the bottom and, um, and there's just a layer of PET on the top uh, I don't think there's any clogs stuff is all coming through um, and you can see the smoke sort of billowing around in here but this is immensely slow. I've got the flame up very high um, and the drips, the drips are coming over very slowly which is a bit of a shame seeing as the sun is now below the tree line um, which gives me about half an hour until it's completely dark uh, and this is looking like it's going to take another six hours to finish. <laughs> ah fuck. Alright I've hardly collected anything at all um, but I'm going to have to stop it because it's just going too slowly. Um, it's a drop about every nine minutes now, and we're just too slow. At this point, I'm just wasting gas. I'm going to have to take this apart, uh, see what's up. Um, I might just not have enough sodium hydroxide, so another day I'm just going to have to try it with a higher, higher amount of sodium hydroxide. Right, so let this cool down and it'll be pitch black by the time it's all cooled down, but you know, <sighs> I can do it. So I added our distillate to some salt water, and yes, we do have some benzene. A very, very small layer floating on top of it there. But it does prove that this reaction is working. We are doing the hydrolysis and then the decarboxylation all in one pot. 
Um, but there is far much more of this orange solid than there is of benzene. Um, I don't really know what it is. Look at that. It's disgusting. Um, it's, it came close to sort of blocking off this condenser. It's formed a nice thick wall on the inside of here. As I sort of expected, this uh, is all stuck together. It's all gummed up because of some of the crud got into this joint here and here. So I'm going to have to soak this in hot water to be able to get the joints out. Um, and we get to have a look inside our uh, reaction flask here and see what our problem is, why we weren't getting any more distillate over. And it is because we have charred it to heck. Uh, get the light right. It is just all black in there. Um, so I've got to think about why that is. Um, oh, it smells disgusting in there. Um, so why did it char? Well, I guess the temperature got too hot. Um, but then it didn't decarboxylate very well. Hmm. The only thing I can really think of is that I need just a larger excess of sodium hydroxide so that, um, we're not just charring the plastic. Like, it is just all the plastic pieces are sitting in the molten hydroxide. Also, maybe I'm going to cut the pieces of the plastic smaller, but it takes me so long to cut up that plastic. Hmm. <laughs> so I'm trying to clean all this shit off the, uh, <laughs> distillation apparatus. And, uh... All these joints are stuck, so I was trying to twist in my hands, and I literally just shattered this in my hands. Um, to, to be fair, it was actually already cracked. I'm not sure if you could see it in previous videos, but it had a big crack running down here, all the way through it. So it had a, you know, I knew it was going to break at some point, but still, <laughs> this project will be the death of me. I've broken so much glass, we're trying to fucking do this, and uh, worst bit is the joints are still all stuck. <laughs> oh fuck! All right, keep going. Let's all right, I've decided to give this one more shot. I've got half the amount of plastic we used last time, so this is one soft drink bottle worth of plastic, chopped up to roughly centimeter squared pieces. We have 41 grams of sodium hydroxide, which corresponds to a 10 times molar ratio, because last time I think it really charred up, it um, solidified, and um, I really think the only way this is gonna work is if we have a huge excess of sodium hydroxide. Alright, it's only been about 15 minutes or so and I, it's already stopped working. Um, just pumped out white smoke and then gave up. Uh, and how much product we got? I think we have more bug than product in there, to be honest. Once again, I've ruined the glassware uh, for nothing, but uh, we know that it's not really the ratio of sodium hydroxide that's causing this not to work. It must really be come down to some of the other issues being uh, the particle size of the PET chunks and the uh, the heating rate. I mean really the next step is for me to try and find a way to powderize the PET but it doesn't work in a blender. It takes me you know 15 minutes to chop it up into centimeter chunks. It would take me so long to, to, to try and grind it up or something by hand. I think we've got more than enough for one video to be honest. Um, so if you can think of a way to grind up PET into little chunks like powder, not chunks, like actual, like, like the sodium benzoate was, pow just nice fine powder. Um, and then I can grind it with the sodium hydroxide, and I think this reaction will work much better with that, that way, because it's not working barely at all. Um, so if you think of a way that, that's easy, <laughs> and you can do that, let me know. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching this video, I hope it wasn't too confusing, and you're, you're following what I'm doing, and, um, hmm. Yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll see you in the future.